bull riding, there's so much, the adrenaline for me starts way before the ride. that comes with it, the unpredictability, the challenge, everything about bull riding, that's what keeps drawing me to this boy. The thing about bull riding, everyone usually sees on TV and sees the tour on TV and sees us riding, but there's a whole lot more to our life and what goes on behind the scenes of riding bulls to actually being on tour. I mean, from practicing to just, you know, living life in general, trying to keep yourself in the right shape, and trying to keep yourself fit enough and healthy enough to be able to go to ride on a tour. That's a lot of the stuff that no one really ever sees. With bull riding, you can't do it on your own. The thing about it, it's usually a team effort, so to speak, with, it's, it could be either you and just one other person or you or a team of people. Um, sometimes you're lucky enough to get four or five helpers around there. You, got, you usually have, you know, counting yourself, obviously you on the bull, someone opening the gate, um, usually that person will double as someone who put, puts the flank on the bull and makes sure it's not going to fall off. And then you've got a bullfighter. If you're lucky, you're going to have a bullfighter. That's where this, this whole bull riding thing is it's kind of backward compared to every other sport. In every other sport, they have a team of trainers, a coach and everyone like that. They're at the practice. When we go to practice, we're just lucky if we have one extra person there helping you. practice bulls just showed up um, we there's been a few bulls that have been going and practice I, uh, I asked my buddy Bill could he bring him over and let us practice on him today so uh, really good practice bulls good to be able to get your fundamentals right and they're the one I'm going to get on he's good enough to buck you off if you make a silly mistake but you should ride him every single time so it's uh, it's fun to get on so we'll just unload him and run him in Derek's a wild man. He's he's someone who last time I seen him he had a full beard. He's like looks like a mountain man. Looked like he hadn't even been in into town for about the last three months. He had beard, hair everywhere, whatever. I showed up to a bull riding and but every single time he shows up he tries hard. Derek Anthony Lacasa. Uh, I got him on my first calf when I was five. Loved it. Got kicked in the back of the head. I thought it was funny. Most kids were crying at our first little rodeo, and I've, I've, I've been around it ever since. So.
so much kick and so much time and it's easier. Yeah. But you, that's as good far, practice. Bro. Yeah, that's as far as I've seen you do it because usually you Tennessee is yeah, you sit straight up and down. But that's good. That gives you because he's got so much time and so much like it gives you time. You can get right out over him like this yeah. and overemphasize it. Remember, I was talking to you about. Yeah, that. no, I felt like I was. Yeah, no, that was good. That was that was really good. That was a good practice ball. I told I you. get left handed. Oh, no. That wouldn't work out so good. He, that, that was, I've seen him play four times, and the, when I video I showed you, that's what he's done every single time. And then, but in this short pen, because you know, he's got to go. Yeah, that big arena, yeah. he can get away, you know, and yeah. he, he knows that if he circles around to that little catch pen up there where he's from, that he doesn't have to go too much further. Yeah. And here he's got no, he hates the buck. Yeah, yeah. That's good practice, ball. Yeah, Derek's been. We've been traveling a little bit together here lately and he's been having a little bit of trouble with getting forward enough. He has a tendency of wanting to sit straight up and down, which is a good thing, but when bulls kind of get away on him and move forward a little bit, he wants to run him back. So he has to, you know, he, I, I talked to him about kind of overemphasizing getting forward and um, he did that there on that ride. It was good. That bull's a really good bull. He's kicking and rearing. And he got good timing for us as a bull rider and someone like it, uh, anyone at this level that's here we can ride that bull that's here but he's a bull that gives us time to practice stuff that we need to get practiced and get fixed so that's what makes him so perfect he's he fundamentally might not do it right every single time which costs him a lot but you know he's going to give it 110 percent and that's what it takes in this sport Dylan's a funny one, he's quiet, you just kind of don't get very much out of him sometimes. He's tall for a bull rider, a lot of people say, like, obviously with me, it's a shorter man's game, but he's tall and skinny, and um, but he's won the, the national title in, uh, in California high school, I mean, he's great in high school, and coming to the professional ranks uh, two years ago, made it onto the Bill Ford Tough Series, won, went really good in the Challenger Series. It's just kind of a... It was a stepping stone. It was you start out as a kid getting on calves. About me and my cousin Derek were five when we first started getting on, and uh, worked our way up from, from calves to steers to junior bulls, and then senior bulls, and then now we travel everywhere going to professional rodeos and professional bull ridings, and it's it's a good time. <laughs> And he was just a tad bit behind him coming out of the shoot. And that can happen, that reason come was because that bull didn't leave straight away and he kind of, for lack of terms, he kind of waited for him to sit down. It's hard to really hold yourself there, especially when you're him being left-handed, that bull leaving, you don't have anything to hang on to. So he was just a tad bit behind him and that bull, by the time he, he got around with him good, but by the time he caught up to exactly where he needed to be, he had to make a big move and then that bull ducked out and went the other way. So that happens, but that's why you practice, trying to get that stuff right. When when I was a kid, I was a freshman, I was 5'2", uh, 89 pounds, and, uh, and I thought, mm, I might be 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, I didn't think I had much growing left in me. I figured I'd just fill out maybe a little, but no, it went the other way. I went up and stayed slender. You know, at the PBR level, he's got a lot of potential and he rides really good. He's going through a bit of a slump right now, so for me to be able to help somebody like him who has a lot of talent is awesome. He can come here and I can tell him straight away as soon as he gets bucked off what's going wrong and then he can get on and try it again. And um, I know exactly what he's going through. It's frustrating and he's going to get through it pretty quick, but he's working hard at doing it and he's only one right away from getting everything back, but everyone's going to know who Dylan Van Ice is pretty soon.
Caleb Daniel Johnson. I'm 19, just turned 19 on May 29th. I'm getting there. The more I get on, I realize I'm getting better and better, and you always learn something new. So, Caleb, Caleb, our, our little uh, little buddy. He had all the talent in the world, and he's the most polite kid you've ever known. He listens, and he wants to get better, and he tries hard. And um, I really love so, you know that about him because every single time he's always yes sir, and he's looking you in the eye and listening to what you got to say about what he's doing wrong or what can help him and what can make him better. And he just needs a little bit more experience and I hopefully can help all of them through that. And you know, I, I look forward to seeing him go a long way because he's got everything that it takes. This is all right. He was, uh, I was doing a little bit too much movement at first, but once I kind of just sat down and relaxed and thought about staying small, I rode good, didn't make any bigger moves than I needed to. So it's a great practice bull for me, especially to that direction because I've been having trouble with bulls to the left lately. So that's definitely gonna help. Well, I was driving up a little bit more lately. I've been having a problem with not driving enough when they come up in the front end and I've been having a problem with lifting and reaching. And uh, that one really helped me to work a little bit and get out over them and still have time to think about what I was doing and staying small and just riding him for what he is, not overriding him. That's, what, that's the thing that keeps everyone coming back is because that feeling, no matter what you do, you can't get that feeling anywhere else. It's here, this stuff's real. Well, the funny thing about Brody was the first time I ever met him, uh, I was actually helping another, another young fellow that we help, uh, Cash Robinson, his name is. Um, I'd got him, I'd seen him ride a few times and I was over here actually uh, helping him practice and uh, showing him some things. He was actually qualified to ride at the junior bull riding at the PBR World Finals that they had two years ago. Um, so we're over there practicing and Brody shows up with his parents and I'd never seen him before, I just heard about him and he didn't say two words to me that day. So it was like either he doesn't like me or he's just super quiet. Well, he's just, I work out he's super quiet. Then the next thing is he's getting on and I'm thinking, this kid's only getting on because his dad wants him to get on because his dad was there or whatever. But I've since come to find out that if his dad and mum had their way, he wouldn't, you know, he did, they wouldn't really want him to get on. I mean, they, they love him doing it and they love watching him do it, but it scares the hell out of him, like, as it does probably with every parent. So um, that was the first time I ever seen Brody and the first steer I ever put him on, he just stuck it all over him. And uh, this kid didn't know what he was doing, he didn't know how he was doing it. He just knew that when he got on, he tried hard and he knew that he had to stay on. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, I mean, that's the thing about riding you. The adrenaline's always there, even though this is practice and these bulls don't. I mean, he's a kid, he's a 14 year old kid that's getting on something and he's had injuries before. So, I mean, I know his heart's going and mine is too, I'm shaking. I mean, I want to, 
I don't know, I might be bad. I want to see him win more than what I want to win myself. It's, uh, it's awesome to see him succeed and to see somebody that you're teaching or is learning something, to see him be able to do something and succeed at something that's so difficult and not many people can do, it's a pretty awesome feeling. That, the first time I ever seen him, that first one I ever seen him, that was the day I was like, this kid has talent that not a lot of kids at his age, let alone his uh, you know, experience, they, they don't come along like that every day. So it was kind of, it was something that was, and he was quiet and he's a good kid and you know, it, I kind of took him under my wing and have tried to help him and we're really trying to, uh, you know, keep things slow and not trying to get him too advanced for uh, too quick. Uh, he's 14 years old so my goal and ba basically life is in four years time, when he's 18 years old, he's ready to go to the PBR and he's ready to win a lot of money. Well, there is some people out there that say that the PBR is not an extreme sport. Well, try putting yourself on a 1,600 pound bull that's got horns as long as your arm. That you have no control over. wants to buck you off his back and that's what his job is and you've got to try and stay him for eight seconds. Does it get any more extreme than that? No, I don't think it does. a motorcycle and do backflips, I think that's extreme. I, I appreciate that, I love it, I know how much, I love to watch it, I love how hard it is to do. But if you don't want to do it to on the dirt today, you can do it into a foam pit. Um, if you ride a skateboard, you don't have to jump off 10 stairs today or you don't have to hit a rail today. I love the sport, love to watch it, but when you nod your head on a bull and decide that that's what you want to do right now, there is no stopping it. There's no, after you say yes, you're ready to go, you can't shake your head and say no. Once that gate's cracked open, you're on your own. And that's when, that's dangerous. I mean, that's extreme, if you ask me. I mean, and if you ask any other athletes that want to come and try it, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. <laughs>